you watch my vlogs on a regular basis, then you might remember that last month I was in the famous village of Yaley trying to catch my first Yaley 30 pounder. I ended the vlog with the second biggest fish in the lake in my hands, and I ended it by saying how wonderful it would be to try and catch the biggest fish in the lake next month. Well, sometimes the stars align and everything goes perfect, and I was fortunate to land the biggest carp in the lake, known as Two Tone, only a few days after releasing last month's vlog. And this month, it's all about how that story unfolded. Well, it's another beautiful August evening and I've only just got here. I've not got the rods out yet. I've just set them up and more importantly, I've fed Bo and given her a drink because we had a bit of a hellish journey down here, if I'm honest. It said 3.15 on the sat-nav and it was close to five hours, so that M1 has been an absolute nightmare at the moment, but it's definitely looking good. There's only me and John down here. John's in Middle Woods, which is a swim just through those trees at the other side of the lake. He's uh, down here with his missus and his nipper, so I'm not going to go around and see him, but it looks good in that area as well, if I'm honest, because there's still quite a few of these good fish that's due out. The beginning here is definitely due, fish known as two-tone, because it normally does a post-spawning capture, and uh, it's not been out now for quite a few weeks. So, uh, yeah, that one would definitely be welcome, but there's some nice 30-pound commons in here that are also on the missing list that I wouldn't mind getting hold of, but... Uh, I'm going to have a bite to eat first before I do anything and a drink before I put the rods out because the bird life in here has been a bit of a problem recently and bite time is at first light so I don't want them to find the bait this evening and then at first light they start diving on it straight away. So what I'm going to do is just hold back on putting the rods out until just on dark then I know at first light which is bite time they won't have found the bait then, the birds that is and hopefully there's a better chance of me catching the fish. You hear a lot of people talking about reading the rods in during the day or during quiet hours and resting the swim. And does it work? Well, I definitely do it. Uh, especially on small waters. I mean, this isn't a small water and it's not really a heavily fished water either, but I think on any venue where there's angling pressure and there's been angling pressure for a number of years, then it pays to get those lines out of the water during the times when you've got least chance of catching fish. Tight lines especially, because that's how I tend to fish, they act in a similar sort of way to those little experiments you used to do when you were at school when somebody had a cup and tied a bit of string on the end of it and so when you walked to the other end of the classroom and then tied a cup on the other end of the string and then you pulled it tight, you could hear what your mate was saying down the line. So when it comes to fish, it definitely does pay to keep those tight lines out of the swim as much as possible to rest the swim because it, it does work. And, you know, I'm a big believer in it. And on here, it's pretty clear when the, the bites are coming. It's, it's during the morning, sometimes at night as well. But during the hours of daylight, you know, middle of the day, and up to sort of tea time there's not a great deal happening on the lake so is it working i don't know but it's certainly making me feel confident and in carp fishing terms that's definitely the key to catching them in my book i've got two rods to put out probably going to go on the same places that i always put them on which is one on top of the plateau which is in line with the pylon in the distance there. There's a nice clear area out there amongst some weed. And then there's another one towards the island in that direction. And there's a nice little hump there, gravel hump, that comes up to five foot as well, which has done me a few fish. So, uh, yeah, it's a case of following what I did in the last vlog, really, by putting quite a lot of bait out, because uh, that's what's been doing with the bites. You know, we're, we're post-spawning now. The fish are starting to feed before things start to cool off and in the past we always used to talk about the big autumn feed but I actually think that August is now the month when they have the big feed. Last year it was the same, the year before that it was the same and going by the last few weeks it's definitely been the same on here so uh, let's hope it continues and in the morning I'm holding a big fat mirror.
check this baby out. Might not be massive, but he is absolutely stunning. Look at that. I'm guessing this is probably one of the Dinton fish because Alan's put a few of them in here and I don't think they're very old. I look at his mouth, it doesn't look like it's been caught very often. But that is beautiful, it really is. It's almost orangey in colour. Chocolate orange, beautiful. What a lovely car. This year Avid Carp have revamped their best-selling recovery slings. You can now purchase this carp-friendly product in a brilliant camo pattern design which you'll find on lots of their recent products. Not only do the new slings look super cool, they are lightweight, quick to dry and extremely durable, making them the perfect sling for the modern carp angler. With some lakes outlawing the use of recovery slings, the best feature of this new product is that the four side floats can be independently removed, turning it into a completely different product and saving you a few quid from having to buy a separate waist sling. Made from a super lightweight mesh material, this brilliant product is tapered towards the bottom, helping to retain the carp in an upright position. It has a side pocket, has a bright yellow retaining cord and sight float, along with a brass thread for secure fixing. Each sling comes supplied in a 100% heat seal waterproof bag, which helps to stop the unwanted water and smells from leaking during transportation. The camo recovery slings are available in standard and XL sizes, so no matter how big your target carp, you can care for them in the best way possible. They retail at $54.99 for the standard and $64.99 for the XL, but a shop around on the net will see you get either of them for five or six quid cheaper. For more info, check them out at avidcarp.com. Soaking wet hat and uh, just capturing the moment because there is a serious storm out there at the moment. I don't know if you can see out there. I don't know if it'll pick it up. It might do. That is some serious rain. I don't even know if you can hear me because it's that loud on the bivvy, but yeah, Yankee weather. Proper big fish weather because it's 20 degrees at the moment as well. And um, yeah, they're all spawned out, but I'm not too bothered about weight. If I get one, then I'll be chopped. They're all down in weight. There's one just that was caught this weekend. It was a, a 24 that was 31 a few weeks ago. So it might only be three or four, five normal carp, not the grass carp, that are over 30 pounds at the moment. But I ain't bothered. And it is good, big fish weather at the moment. Check that out. The river behind me was uh, flooded only a few days ago. So yeah. Let's hope it doesn't get flooded out tonight. Awesome though, great atmosphere. And that is what carp shins about sometimes. Just being out on the bank, in the bivvy, in the pouring rain, in mega atmosphere. I know there's loads of people out there that love to know about the rigs that you've caught your fish on so I'm just going to run through what I've been using on this lake. I'm sorry to those guys that watch my vlogs every month and see me repeating the same rig stuff but that is basically my carp fishing. I've just got some captive coated hook clean from Avid, I've taken all the outer coating off it so you're just left with a nice supple braid in the middle. I've then knotless knotted that to an armor rock hook, one of the snag hooks that's new out this year. These are super strong and perfect fishing in thick weed like we've got here and then I've just slipped over the eye of it, one of the liner liners and then the other end of the rig is attached to a lead clip via a grinner knot. I've then just got a four ounce lead on there, nice and heavy, which is perfect for driving that hook home. I've then just lightly pushed on a tail rubber just to keep the lead in place. And on the hook, I'm using an SLK wafter, which is quite tight to the shank of the hook. I don't like long hairs, I like them nice and short. And then I've just trimmed this so it's critically balanced and sitting perfectly over the lake bed. proper weird how carp fishing works sometimes and the longer you've been doing it the more you see strange things happening and yesterday I had a lad called Johnny coming to me swimming and he said 
Oh, I had two tone on this time last year, this exact day last year, I hooked it and lost it. And then, coincidentally, the next morning, I catch it. And for many years, I worked at Carp Talk where we used to see carp getting reported on a weekly basis. And they used to fill in the catch report forms with the dates on, etc., on the, the uh, catches that they sent in. And we used to log all the dates that the catches got caught. And over time, we did these, these little features in the magazine, which was called five years ago this week, 10 years ago this week, 15 years ago this week, and 20 years ago this week. And you started seeing the pattern of the same fish getting caught in the same week five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. There was one standout one was a fish called the amphibium, which was um, a big mirror that used to live in the Essex Manor. And that fish was in the five years ago this week, the 10 years ago this week, and the 15 years ago this week. I can remember that one. So that's proper strange. And, you know, there's a, another example I can give here is that the wood common from Spitfire Pool which has only been caught about a dozen times in its life and at least three of the captures of that fish were on exactly the same date which is proper weird and there's two of the captures of it that are a day either side of it as well so at least five of its captures are in a three day period so if you want to catch that fish then it tells you that you're better off being on the bank on that particular week and you can do this kind of research into lots of fish captures and it's something that I do an awful lot of on this lake, I haven't done it, I must say that. I focus more on where the fish actually gets caught from than the particular dates that it gets caught. But uh, if you want to save time and you're, you're short of time and you're limited with your fishing, then trust me, you can do some research into the history of fish captures of the fish that you're targeting and it can really make the job a lot easier for you. And uh, it's proper weird big fish hunting. It really is, it's something that a lot of people think it's more to do with rigs and bait and of course rigs and bait are important but for me it's more down to understanding the fish that you're trying to catch than anything and on this occasion Johnny coming into my swim last night and saying he lost it this time last year on this exact day and then I go and catch it is there something in it I don't know but there's definitely little things like that that you can use to help you track down your target car you're targeting a big fish you do need all the stars to align and I've been feeling good about the swim that I've been fishing I've been feeling good about the tactics I've been using and I actually arrived at the lake yesterday with this kind of feeling that yeah something's going to happen and the longer you've been carp fishing and when those moments arrive I kind of knew that everything was perfect for me to catch the biggest fish in the lake and that's what's happened this morning he spawned out but I'm not bothered about that because weight nowadays for me, of course it's important, but it's not the be all and end all about my carp fishing. It's more to do with enjoying the venues, targeting certain fish, and then catching those fish. And the buzz that I got from that fish this morning, uh, spawned out weight, uh, I know full well it'd give me exactly the same buzz if I'd have caught it and it'd been a little bit bigger. But uh, let's have a look at how things unfolded. Well, we're fairly sure that that is the king of the pond, or queen of the pond, because she's a female. I think it's two-tone. Definitely looks broad across its back, but it'll definitely have lost a bit of weight. So, uh, let's get it weighed in. Well, that's mega. Lovely start to the morning. Well, John reckons this is two-tone, so chuffed to bits, is it? You was the last captor of it. Uh, mega. How you doing? Good. 
Is this the biggest carp you've seen? No, your dad caught a bigger one last night, didn't he? How big was it? 49 and 5 Whoa! Biggest, this is going to be the biggest carp, mirror carp I've ever seen, right? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. this was a grass carp last night when he your dad caught. I did struggle to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> was it as big as you? Uh, not quite. It's about as long as I am. I'll tell you what, yeah. it's far off the length of you. Yeah, it looked a long, long fish in the picture. Like oh. Yeah. <laughs> Are you excited to see this fish anyway? Yeah. Oh, wicked. Let's get it out and have a look then. Well, it won't be as big as when your dad caught it because it's after spawning. So give us, a, give us a guess on what you think it's going to weigh. 37, it's gone up a pound. You said 36.5 a few minutes ago. <laughs> 37.5, all right. I bet you're not too far off. Let's have a look at it. Well, little Sam behind the camera at the moment has uh, never been fishing before. And last night, he saw his dad with a 49 and a half pound grass carp, which is definitely one of the biggest ones in here, and also one of the biggest ones in the UK. And the second fish is this one, which is two-tone, and this is the biggest carp in the lake. It's spawned out at 36, but either way, I am proper happy. You can certainly come fishing with me if you want to, because you're a good luck charm, but definitely. <laughs> what a mega fish. Tops off a fantastic week's fishing because last week I had some absolute views, including the second biggest fish in the lake. Uh, proper happy. <laughs> <laughs>